and what is really important is that the sustainability megatrend, the green transition and the digital transition, they are interconnected. Most of the uh, green transition stuff is, is very much about also about connectivity. So the development of the energy system and the digital communications network and everything that it brings with it, better sustainability, better productivity, better industrial, industrial material use, etc. They are all going together. Uh, and, and this is really important because we've got the cycle. We've got COVID release. We've got the war, all devastating concerns around those areas. But a megatrend, what they tend to do is they burst through those and they carry on because we're talking about structural change as well. Mm -hmm. So this structural change is still well financed from the customers. They're looking beyond their own personal problems caused by these other poly crises. And they're saying, yeah, we're going with this. Yeah. Absolutely, yes. I mean, of course, there are economic cycles and, and no, nobody is immune, but yeah. we are riding on this big mega trend. There are always going to be cycles up and down that will affect the markets, but this mega trend is there to stay for quite a long time, at least until 2030. What about the financing for it as well? Cost of money has gone up. It's become far more realistic compared to what we've seen over the last five years or so as well. The financing is still available? Financing is clearly available when there is a good business case. Yeah. And when you are able to show that, for example, through industrial digitalization, you are able to increase your productivity, it is actually one of the best investments you can make when there are weak economic times. And yet, when I look back at the numbers back in the, the third quarter, I mean, again, just saying weighing heavily on yourselves and the likes of Ericsson as well, worsening outlook for the industry across the region as well. Real concern uh, about uh, delays in signing new patents, licensing deals with telecoms as well. Do you want to address that side of the business? Well, we are in silent period. We are publishing sure. our Q4 results. Well, we can look back and just look at the if we, yeah, if, Exactly. If we go back to, back to Q3, what we did say is that despite all the worries about the general economy, we still expect that our addressable market will grow next year. Mm -hmm. And we are in such a strong position with our technology that, that our target is to increase market share in that market that is still expected to grow next year. Where are you seeing the best growth areas as well? Where do you have concerns? It's, it's actually shifting a little bit. Mm. Uh, North American market has been really, really strong. Uh, it's realistic to assume some normalization of CapEx there, as many of our customers have uh, uh, announced. But we are then seeing other markets, especially India growing extremely fast. I mean, that's kind of the geographical mix. But then there's another trend. Most of the capex of our customers has traditionally been on the, on the communication service provider operator side. Mm -hmm. But what we are now seeing very fast growth in is uh, industrial digitalization where enterprise customers are investing in, in private campus networks to boost their sustainability and productivity. Yeah, that's very interesting. Look, in terms of the positivity you have, Obviously, you gameplay more negative scenarios as well. What is your biggest concern? Um, we've spoken to all kinds of CEOs about the second half of this year, the resumption of the energy crisis, perhaps a resumption of inflation that is not actually quite as subdued as people hope it is as well. What about for you, though? I mean, sustained inflation would clearly be um, a uh, concern. Uh, the supply chain sign, as we said in yeah. the Q3, that is actually easing up right now when the economy is weakening. There is no more semiconductors available, which is very much a positive thing. But, uh, of course, what it would be that if this economic cycle would turn out to be worse than people would currently expect. Ch China uh, reopening is not going to affect the semiconductor supply chain, is it? It's not, from our point of view, a, yeah. a, a huge uh, thing. China opening up uh, is, uh, on balance, Just most likely a positive, positive thing to the, to the economy. But there's a lot of supply available now on the semiconductor yeah. side, so I don't think that will be a game changer. Brilliant. Look, Pekka, good luck with your panel later on as well. I, I, I might try and pop along because I think it, it's fascinating to uh, hear what you and, and one or two of the other panelists have to say about this. And, and the positivity as well, which is... Welcome relief to a lot of the doom and gloom. But nice again, again, it's all about sustainability. As yeah. we always say, there is no green without digital.